What's good, y'all? So you already know it's your girl Jake So, aka Bars and Baby Hairs, and you are now tuned in with Austin Brand Music. Real talk, it was my mom, like when her and my dad kind of like separated. Um, she really like pursued God in a heavily way, and we were kind of all forced to, to do it with her. Because I'm gonna be very transparent here. I realized at a very like early age, I was like, yo, I'm uh, That also doesn't mean that you are uh, this un undercover Asian and, you know, uh, you not letting show to twerk on you in the club, but you definitely shouldn't be there either. Jack, could you please tell us a little bit about yourself for those of uh, who, which, who have not been here uh, in our past show? All right. So how much time do I got? Because that's a long time. <laughs> Take your time. Take your time. <laughs> um, so it's good, y'all. So my name's Jack So, aka Bars and Baby Hairs. Um, so funny story about that is that when I first was basically just trying to get my feet really wet within the the space, I had a homeboy that he'd always just tell me that he's like, "Yo, he's like we're just gonna call you Bars and Baby Hairs." So I kind of just kept it. Yeah. Um. So after that, I kind of just attached it. But um, I'm born and raised in Miami, Florida. They counted three or five all day, every day. You feel me? But I am now a um, Orlando native uh, right now. So, okay. yeah, you know, I had to migrate to Orlando. So it's not too bad out here. Still Florida, just a very different way of living in Florida. Really? Sure. How so? <sighs> so Miami is very, like, fast-paced. Um, it almost, in a way, like, I've never really been to New York. But as far as from what I hear people talk about, it's just, mm. like, it's a hustle and bustle. Like, mm. it's. People are always moving. It's like the city's never sleeping. Everybody's always awake. Um, granted, here in Orlando, I don't doubt that there are people that may be awake. <laughs> However, everything is like 30 minutes minimum from everywhere that you're trying to go. As right. opposed to Miami, I'm like five minutes is five minutes. Like out here, you got two, three miles and you're driving about like, you know, 15, 20 minutes. And I'm just like, it's just different out here. There's no lights out here. Like, um, <laughs> it's dark. Like, I just, it's very different out here. Um, but I also live in an area that's very populated. So, like, Disney World, uh, yeah. Universal, all those parks. Like, that's where I'm at. So, it's just, like, <sighs> granted, Miami has a lot of tourists as well. But this, these are just different types of tourists. These are, like, people that's coming in with their family, mm -hmm. like, their kids. In Miami, it's, like, everybody's trying to get away from their kids and, like, you know, yep. have a good time. Yep. Um so it's really just a different way of living culturally um, where I live right now. So it's a lot more Puerto Rican dominated than anything, um, as opposed to Miami, where you kind of had like a mixture of everything. You had Haitian, you had Puerto Rican, you had Cuban, Dominican, like it was just a big melting pot over here. It's like you got to kind of travel out to some different parts to be able to get all that, like mm. different nationalities and stuff. Um but nonetheless, I was like, it's not a bad place. It's just not Miami. Right. There are so many things that when I go down there, they're like, it's a, it's a checklist that I have. I'm like, I need to go here, eat this, go watch this, do this, because they don't have that up here. Right. Everything up here is all catered towards Disney World and theme parks. I'll be very honest. There's nothing against Mickey Mouse and stuff like that, but that's a very expensive mouse, so I don't <laughs> I don't really get too crazy about Mickey Mouse. Um. <laughs> I really do miss living like 15 minutes from the beach. Now, if I want to go to the beach, it's like about almost two hours just for me to just go to the beach. So, wow. yeah, it's it's a very different way of living. But it's, like I said, it's still Florida, still nice, um, yeah. but very different from what I'm used to and stuff like that. But outside of that, um, like I said, born and raised in Miami. Um, I got younger siblings uh, that they're also very creative. Uh, my sister's a dancer. My brother's a videographer slash cinematographer slash artist slash choreographer. Boy, there's a lot of things. Yeah, great. Um, very much so. But, you know, outside of that, um, we all kind of just do our own thing. Um, I've been doing music respectfully, like, taking it real serious since 2017. Mm -hmm. um, and just kind of just, like, pretty much just pushing myself out of my own comfort zone to really just do what it is that I feel God is calling me to do. Because um, a lot of people will tell you, hey, I feel like God is calling me to do this. And then they start, you know, putting their hand in things and try to do it themselves. Yep. Um, so I'll say that. I was like, I'm very guilty of doing that every now and then. So 
you know, now I'm just on a path where I'm really just letting God just do whatever it is he wants to do in spite of what I feel or if I agree with what he's got going on for me. So. Man, that's and that's uh we can get into that kind of conversation, too, because there's a different there's definitely a difference between uh, what it is that you feel right versus actually what he wants you to do. Um, but uh, so so before, you know, before we kind of go into that conversation, so I'm not even sure if the last time we were on here, if we really got a chance to kind of like for real, for real, hear your story. I mean, I know, you know, we kind of went back and forth on some different topics and everything. Uh, again, if you guys haven't already, make sure you guys check out our YouTube because we do have uh, those clips from our past interview uh, on there as well. But uh, I want to kind of get go back to the origin, right? The origin of who Jack of Soul is, kind of your um, upbringing, uh, your your family dynamics, right? Um, you know, uh, just kind of just kind of walk me through it. Uh, you know, you ain't got to go back to diapers, but you know, uh, <laughs> give give me give me the root as to to where you came from, you know, and how you came up. Okay, so I was like, short version. Um, I didn't grow up like I didn't grow up Christian. Okay. Um, actually, like it was more like something that kind of happened as I became like a was it twelve, thirteen years old. Mm-hmm. Um, where my mom, like her family. Um, what is it? Her family actually grew up uh, Catholic, funny enough. Um, so it was like her dad, her mom, and then her dad went ahead, converted, and then everybody else kind of just followed mm. um, with their own relationship with God. But real talk, it was my mom, like when her and my dad kind of like separated, um, she really like pursued God in a heavenly way, and we were kind of all forced to to do it with her wow. um so that's kind of interesting about, that after the separation because sometimes separation or you know really really tragic type things normally make people want to run away from god oh no 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 in this case my mom was like she went back to basically kind of just what it was for her like where she felt that god met her at gotcha um wow. so with her she, where we was in church seven days a week boy I, I kid you not. I promise, boy. <laughs> I used to. I'm not gonna say hate because that's a very strong word. But mind you, I'm in like high school, like just going every single day. Yeah. Monday through Friday. Sometimes on Sundays we went to church twice. Um, and it was just a lot, man. But at the same time, like the church didn't really embrace hip hop. Like hmm. it was a. It was something really hard for me because it was like. One, I didn't say that I wanted to grow up and become a rapper. I actually kind of started doing, like, poetry to just express myself and things like that. And I remember, like, seeing my cousin, him and his friends, they'd be in the back of the house and, you know, basically just freestyle. I'm like, hey, what y'all doing? Mm -hmm. So it kind of just started like that as an interest. And then um, as I got older, it was um, I got invited to this uh, youth event. Um, It was called, what the heck was it called? It, they changed it over the years, but yeah. basically it was like, it was called 24 Hours with God, okay? okay. Um, went, and it was literally like a whole lockdown situation where like you stayed over this and the third. I was like, I'm not used to this. But Boy, that sounds like some was, scared straight <laughs> to Jesus yo, kind of deal. I was like, yo, I was like, <laughs> who wants to be here this long? Like, I want to go home. <laughs> like, I don't want to be here with all you people. Wow. But, um... It was beautiful to see because it was like during that time, um, I met some really dope people that came out from different parts of like Florida yeah. that they came to come be with us. And it really just intrigued my interest to really get to know who God was. Um, and I remember at the time I was just writing like little freestyles here and there, but yeah. I wrote my first actual song after that event. Um, Do you still remember that they- song? Ah, do I remember this song? Uh, no. Th- there's like bits and pieces that I remember. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. But basically, I remember the the point of the song. The point of the song was basically where I came into a place in my life where I wanted to see God for myself, mm. not because of you know my mom telling us that, that we had to be at church and people telling me that God was good and I wanted to know why people said He was good. I wanted to know yeah. why people willingly woke up and gave their mornings and their nights and all types of the day to, wow. to pray to somebody that they don't see. Um, yeah. 
So it was just a big curiosity that came about. And at the time, I was actually like in a group. It was me and my younger brother. Um, and he was very much more open to like stage presence and things like that. Like I rapped and I looked at the floor. I didn't look at people. Like I didn't move. I was like a little statue. You just shy? But, Is that what it was? Yeah, man. I was just like. I don't know what it was. I just felt like that wasn't my thing. I was like, I don't like the spotlight. I don't like attention. Like, I'd rather just be in the back um, and er everybody else kind of do their thing. But Now, you said you got with you got a sister and a brother. Are they are they both older or younger than you? So, I'm actually the oldest. They're younger than I am. Oh, okay. Huh. Yeah. That's interesting. That I say that's interesting because um, typically the the older sibling, well, maybe not typically, but Sometimes the older sibling is used to having all of the attention, so uh, oh no, 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 they're not, no. they're My not brother normally shy. Sister. Normally the younger <laughs> ones are like, hey, I'm, I'm going to let you know I'm here, and the older ones are like, no, I've been here. No, no. They were there. They were literally brother and sister from a young age. They were putting on shows like for our family and friends. Wow. You know, um, me, I was just like, go ahead, do your thing. But a part of me was always like, God, like, what am I good at? You know, what's my talent? What's my gift? Um, and me, like, trying out different things. Like, I tried out so many different things before I found out what was my thing. Yeah. Um, like, a lot of things that I look back now, I'm like, why did I even do that? Whatever, that's besides mm -hmm. the point. <laughs> um, <laughs> but outside of that, um, it basically drew a curiosity. Me and my brother wrote our very first song. Um, and literally, it was called In You. And basically, it was just like talking about how when I decided to actually see God for myself, I just had so much clarity in my life. Mm. Um, and I was like, you know, you're not going to know what I'm talking about until you give him a chance yourself. So that was really just me, like in my songs, just selling you on the fact of, hey, if he did it for me, he could do it for you. Yeah. And I'm just letting you know, like, this is what's happened to me and take it for what it is. Yeah. Um and kind of just started there. And then after a while, I kind of just like, I was always just asking God, like, is this really what I'm supposed to do? Because it was hard. Like, one, I was, a, I don't say I was a child at the time. Because it was like, I have no job. Uh, for those of you who don't know, beats don't magically appear. And, you know, stuff like that. You got to either find somebody who made it or make of yourself. And they're not free. So no, you know, not if you want some good quality <laughs> either. <laughs> exactly. So I'm like, yo, I was like, you know, what do I do at the time? Like studio, things like that. Like it was all just very new. Yeah. So I was just like, you know what, God, we going we going to do it the way that I can. And I used to take the instrumentals and just perform with them everywhere, tags and all. Didn't yeah. have like nothing for you to find it. It was like, you want to hear this song? You're going to have to like get me to come perform it. That's the only way you're going to hear it. And if you record yeah. it on the phone and play it back, type of thing. Right, right. Um, so, but yeah. So before before we we keep kind of revving up there, uh, I'm interested. And I don't know if I if I just missed it or not, but I'm interested because um, you said uh, you know moms was making you go to church every single day. Um, you know that was about high school ish time. You didn't mm -hmm. necessarily want to be there um, slash you just tired of being there, right? Like because you're you're there all the time. Uh, went to <laughs> a scared straight to Jesus, you know, <laughs> event, uh, you know, for lack of better words. So, um, what, when did that shift? Cause you kind of, in the conversation, you kind of shifted straight to, you know, this is how I kind of went into with God and, and started, uh, really diving in. And, but I, I'm interested as to what made, what made that shift for this shy girl who didn't really want the spotlight, the attention didn't, uh, was kind of getting tired of the, 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 uh, every single day at the church or whatever, uh, to, uh, who you are starting to kind of talk about where you're really intentional about wanting to make music for God, um, wanting to be intentional about what he wants you to do. So what what made that shift for you? I would say the fact of every time I go to church, I always get, granted, everybody's different um, mm -hmm. in believing like if the Holy Spirit can speak through other people. Yeah. Um, the church that I came from, it was a lot of like prophetic people that would be in there. And they'd always have a word for me. And they'd be like, you know, God has something real special for you. Like, you know, th your gifts, this, that, and the third. Like, mm -hmm. just continue to trust in him. And I'm like, bro, I don't know what you guys are talking about. 
I don't right. know anything that you're talking about. But it was basically just the curiosity of, God, what are these people really talking about? And mm. I'm going to need you to show me or help me get there because these people are crazy. Like, that's, that's the simplest way I can say it. These people are crazy. <laughs> well, yeah. And the thing is, like, when anybody talks about, like, they get, you know, they got a word or whatever, um, it, you know, the, the more mature Christian will be able to uh, discern it a little bit better, right? You, you, yep. You're going to make sure it lines up with the word. You know, the Holy Spirit is definitely going to put it on your heart. Um, typically, it's also, you know, others who are very close to you will also, uh, you know, confirm, you know, those things. And so, uh, you know, if you're, if you're kind of going in the shift of like, you know, I, I really don't know if I really want to be here to people keep saying something to you, um, you know, if you, if, if it's not checked correctly, um, it could lead you to a different direction than it really uh, was meant to. So, so you know, you're, you're hearing these things. People are giving you these different words and all that. You're wondering, what is this all about, God? Um, where were some confirmations that made you go, okay, these, these people aren't tripping. Like, they actually, they actually are hearing from God, and I'm starting to hear from Him now. If I'm being honest, the confirmation of it all didn't actually start happening until later. Um. Mm when I would get people that they tell me, um, you know, your songs, your lyrics is helping me where I'm at right now in life. Got you. Yeah. Um, yeah. Outside of that too, it was like a peace at that time before I got anybody to verbally tell me what it was. Mm -hmm. It was just a piece that I was like, okay, God, I feel like this is where I'm supposed to be. And yeah. he just kept moving. He kept, he kept doing things like opening up different opportunities where I was like, I was forced to get out of my comfort zone. Okay. Put it like that. Yeah. Um, yeah. So like from doing certain activities for youth nights to doing um, the outside festivals that they would have. And then on top of that, just like very much being intentional of like, God, if you gave me this gift, cause I'm gonna be very transparent here. I realized at a very like early age, I was like, yo, I'm, I'm pretty good. Like when it comes to writing songs, I'm like, I think I'm pretty good, Yeah. but I don't, I don't know if I want to do this for God though. And I was just like, I, I don't know. And a okay. lot of the influences that I had, they were like, why would you want to do it for God? Like that's so corny and this, that, and the third and mm. you know, whatever. Um, so I remember telling God, I was like, God, you made me good at both. I need you to tell me which way you want me to go. And as far as like you, poetry and music, poetry, music. And then mind you, I never wrote anything that had curse words in it, but it's a very different type of music than what I have now. Understood. Um, okay. But it was, it was very much different. It was more centered around me as opposed to like what God is doing in my life. Right. Um, I was talking about a lot. Of, it was a lot of vanity, really what it was. Um, okay. Understood. Um, so like vanity and just like things like that. But at the same time, like I said, nothing vulgar or like disrespecting myself either, but there was really like no real substance. And that's mm. really what I wanted. I was like, God, I want something real. Like I want something real, but I want to be able to be myself authentically and openly. So people can see that like perfection is in the eye of the beholder because nobody's yeah. perfect. Right. Um, but for the most part, for me, it was really just that, just having that peace in my heart. Like, God, I think this is what you want me to do. And on top of that, I couldn't write a whole song to save my life. The moment that I was like, God, let me see if I can write a song about what you're doing in my life. I wrote mm. two songs that night in mm. like an hour. And I was like, OK, I think this is I think this I think I, I think I hear you. It's We're starting gonna, to make sense. <laughs> right. It's starting to make sense. We're going to walk this way. And um it just continued to build after that. Um, but I'd say my biggest test of actually pushing myself outside was, I told you in the beginning, me and my brother started off as a group. Right. I wouldn't perform without him. If he was not there, I was not performing. Um, Cause so I was you, afraid. You, you, he, was, <laughs> he, was, he was your confidence. He was your confidence. Yeah. Big, gotcha. big, big confidence. Cause he knew how to engage with people. He like, man, I was like, without him, there's, there's nothing like there's nothing here. Wow. Um, so it was a, it was a youth event we had and he couldn't show up cause he was at work. Um, 
it wasn't until like later on I found out why he couldn't show up, the real reason. Um, but he was like, yo, I can't do it, this, that, and the third. And I was so against going up and doing what I was supposed to do because I was like, he's not here. Right, <laughs> I right, can't right. do this. It's not going to be the same. Yeah. Um, and I remember going up there, ministering for the very first time. And then afterwards, I felt in my spirit, me hear from God, like, continue to hold on to me when you do these things. Like, I'm with you. And I'm just like, okay. And mm. from there on, I just continue to push myself. And then later on, this when my brother was like, you know, I feel like I'm being called to do something different. Mm -hmm. But he's like, I know that God has got you, but he's like, I couldn't get you to do it if I would have just told you up front. So he basically knew he was not coming, but he lied to me saying he was coming to only tell me he wasn't for me to be pushed out my <laughs> comfort zone. You to see get how you that out. works? Got you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so after that, it's just been, like I said, it's been, uh, a life-changing alteration yeah. for me um, and just being able to kind of navigate myself um, within doing it. Cause I'm going to be very honest when I first started doing music back in 2017, it sounds very different from everything I'm doing now. And I think yeah. that's a good thing. Um, but at the same time, it's just like, I'm going to be very honest. When I first came into this space, bro, these, these people out here is mean fam, like really mean. <laughs> Yeah. Um, so it's like it wasn't like, oh my God, Jacka, come here, and welcome. It was. It was not like that. It wasn't like that. Yeah. Um. So, so, so are you talking about uh, like they were, like it was. It was a lot of when uh when you did like music submissions and things like that. Everybody uh -huh. had the little fifteen minutes of, of fame. Yeah. Um, kind of just giving their opinion, and as a creative, it can be very discouraging because it's just like you put your heart. And you're so like you're you're basically being super vulnerable mm -hmm. for people to listen to your art and to right. hear the way that you know people either perceived it or it was like yo this this is cool and all but it's not for me mm. um and having that uh feeling of like how do i make it for them um so it was a lot um that i had so, to like so was with. it was it like was it critique in the sense of like you could you could see that there was some value in it or you felt like they were um that they a little bit of both. Given a little bit of both. A little bit of both. Okay. Okay. A little bit of both. I did take the meat and spit out the bones for the critique that I did feel was gotcha. um, very helpful. And I will say that they like taking all that um, and using it to fuel me to be better and asking God to like, hey, you know, what is it that I could do that I can meet your people where it is that they are? Yeah. Um, because at that point in time, I was like, like I said, CHH was so different for me. So like when I found CHH, I was listening to it when it was just like 116 click and uh yep. You know, basically just how it was then. And yep. then when I actually stepped into the space, it wasn't until like 28 no, 2019. Yeah. 2018 going to 2019. Right, right. Yeah. Like mind you like just super fresh and I went to like my first event and I was like, I seen people like having like mosh pits and all sorts of stuff. I'm like, yo, like, where am I? <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, um, yeah. I was like, I didn't know Christian music could sound like this. Cause like I said, what I had as my listening ears was, you know, what, what it was before. Right. Um, so it was just like, when I heard that there was room for growth and it sounded like a lot of something that you put on like the the mainstream ways like you know mm -hmm. being able to have it out there i was like yo okay god i was like how do i stay true to myself and what you're doing for me because when i used to do like a lot of my songs i used to do a lot of teaching so i used to reference a lot of bible verses and i realized mm -hmm. like with time a lot of people took that as like your bible thumping and you know condemning them and things like that so i was like god how do i how do i still get your message out there but make people feel like you're ready to meet them where they are because you met me where i was right um well and that's so that the thing. Whole dynamic yeah and, and that's the thing with with just art in general sorry to cut you off but um that's that's a thought that i was having a little bit earlier too as much as creatives just in general like to say you know i'm going i want to make music for me or i want to make 
you know, I, I post this stuff for me or whatever. Um, I am of the firm believer that you, when you put something out into the public, right, into the to the internet, right, the interwebs, um, mm-hmm. you are no longer doing it for you. Like, yeah, that might there might have been a route for it. Like, maybe you're like, okay, I got to push myself. I got to get out of my comfort zone or, you know, whatever the case may be. But let's be honest. Once you put something out there, it it's is there. 1,000% for someone else to either, you know, uh, uh, critique you, right, judge you, whatever the case may be, or... Um, for them to, and I think this is what you were hitting on, for them to receive what it is that you are doing. And so you're, you were talking about your art, you were creating it in such a way that you wanted to to bring glory to God and also um, relate to others, but then you were hearing, um, hey, this is cool, it's not relatable, but it's cool. Um, how how important How important is it when you sit down to, to create anything now? Like, do you have a a certain person or mindset or age frame or whatever when you are writing certain songs or are you just kind of going and uh, just praying that God uses that to hit somebody? I would say my prayer is always, God, give me whatever it is you want me to share. Mm -hmm. And I hope whoever hears it, it can help them. I never really have a certain uh, age group or demographic in mind. Um, I just always just ask him, hey, I hope that this can bless somebody because I feel like um, when it comes to creating, a lot of people have lost the authenticity Mm -hmm. when they're creating. And I was saying this on my live prayer earlier where it's like a lot of people want authenticity, but what a lot of people don't want to do is make space to receive the people authentically where they are. Mm. Um, So that is kind of just been me in recent time when it comes to creating is like showcasing like hey I have I feel like I have a great relationship with God that I'm improving each and every single day but at the same time like this is where I'm at these were you know some of my thoughts at one point um this is how I felt or maybe this is how I still feel but I'm writing this as a future indication to my future self that when I look back I can be like wow I used to be in this headspace and now I've perceived forward so got you that's kind of just the way of different things nice out of 10 when I put certain songs together I'm just like god where did this come from yeah or the way that I've been seeing it in my life is like certain things that I talk about they're not happening at that time when I'm making it but once it's ready to be released oh man I'm like, God, let me know some, like, if I'm going to be prophetically, you know, putting certain things into perspective of what's going to come about or what you may be doing, I'm like, let me try to get some lottery numbers out of this, but I'm, (laughs) 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 but no, it's literally that where I found myself in a place where I can be on the ups and ups and the songs that he's given me, I'm just like, God, like, you know, where is this coming from? And then it's just like when I get to that season or that place Mm -hmm. and I play back that record, I'm like, yo, like you knew that I was going to be here. Like my spirit knew I was going to be here. Right. But my reality wasn't able to catch up yet. Um, Got you. So that's kind of like my way of when I'm putting out songs and putting ideas together. Um, But definitely always being mindful of whomever gets to listen to it, that it blesses them. Mm -hmm. Um. But like, again, I said, I just trying to be more authentic, talk about the things that a lot of people are afraid to talk about um, because they're afraid of how people are going to receive them or what they may say about them. Mm -hmm. Um, But at the same time, like, I feel like if you can find a way to be more authentic um, in a way that God has allowed you to be, he's going to make sure it gets to those right people. Um, So just asking him what is your way of being authentic because a lot of people feel like in order for them to be authentic they got to be out here with a sailor's mouth and a whole bunch of other things just so you can be like oh snap they're real people right right Um, yeah 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 yeah. (laughs) but for the most part it's like god how do you want me to be authentic and sometimes it could be in a conversation with people i have a lot of like friends that do music that i'll hit them up every now and then just be like hey man how you doing or like, hey, sis, like, what's going on with you? 
Um, and when we have those conversations, they're like, yo, Jekka, I didn't even know that that somebody like you would feel that way because of what I see. And I'm like, you know, I was like, God is working in different ways. But at the same time, I was like, if I have the opportunity to be authentic um, in a way where you may need it, it's just mm-hmm. like being open. Because I don't know that that conversation is going to liberate or do anything. I can only pray that you leave with something out of it and that I can leave with something out of it, even if it's just, I hope it helped that person. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and I, I like that you made the point of just because you're trying to be authentic does not mean you need to be wilding out that you don't, that you need to be um, something more and beyond because somebody can twist, uh, you know, uh, Paul, uh, talking about that he becomes all things to all men and, and uh they they can flip that to be like well you know uh i got some folks who drink and they like to get drunk and all that so i don't got to get drunk but i want to you know i don't want to like be seen as the uppity up christian so i'm gonna make sure i have this drink you know or whatever uh and and the, and the thing is is that it doesn't have to be anything extreme but i do like that you know for instance if you and I know everybody, to some degree, change a little bit depending on their surroundings. Environment, yep. Right? If I, if I am typically around a lot of hip-hop, um, my tongue t- starts to fall asleep and I don't pronounce words as clearly, right? Uh, there's a lot more slang involved, whatever uh, the case may be, you know? And obviously, it's different if I'm, uh, you know, if I'm, if I'm at... A store and i need help from a worker or whatever uh i'm not gonna say hey what's up man you got you know can you help no hey uh pardon me sir do you mind helping me out real quick like you know what i mean like it's it, it's different but just because you're doing that though it does not mean you're not being authentic as well so um can you kind of speak into just because again i want to go a little bit more into the authenticity can you speak a little bit more into where just because you authentically love jesus does not mean that you have to make sure that every con- uh, conversation goes to salvation, you know. Um, but at the same time, too, uh, that also doesn't mean that you are uh, this un- undercover agent and, you know, uh, you not letting show to twerk on you in the club, but yeah. you definitely shouldn't be there either. You know what I mean? So uh, yeah, yeah. Can, you, can you talk about that balance? That's so funny. I right, literally thinking about the scared straight to Jesus moment. There was a service, uh, a sermon that they called it Secret Service Christians. It was so funny. Uh, where nobody <laughs> knows about your relationship but you and God. It was so Sheesh. funny. But, <laughs> um, no, I'd say for the most part, me personally, I think that I make it to a point where I make it very much known that what my beliefs are whom it is that I put my trust and my strength in, mm. um, but also like not, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, belittling the next person next to me yes. if they don't seem to agree. Um, because at the end of the day, it's just like, I'm always open to have a conversation with people, but at the same time, it's just like knowing when to leave a conversation. Yeah. Um, me personally, is just, I kind of put it in that sense of I feel like I make it very clear where if anybody asks me or they have a curiosity, it's just like, oh, you know, Jess is, um, Jess, Jessica, my real name is Jessica. So it's like when people talk to me, um, <laughs> they'll be like, oh, you know, Jess is like this or like Jessica's like that. But just honestly knowing that it's like, I'm not going to push my beliefs on you and make and tell you like you're going to go to hell because you don't believe in what I believe in. Right. But we would go toe to toe when it comes to like you telling me that what I believe in is fake. Mm, like, yeah, that's that's different. You feel me? Like, I feel like I've matured enough in a place where it's like I don't need to um, verbally tell somebody that they're wrong. I can tell them as far as like what I feel like, hey, I don't agree with right. this, that and the third. However, like, don't take my word for it. You know, it's here. You can yep. go read and things like that. Um, but at the same time, like, I'm not going to make you feel less than because you don't believe in what I believe in. However, it's just like, don't force what you believe onto me. Because that was kind of my thing growing up where I didn't really want to know about God. Because I'm like, bro, like, everybody's just forcing him on me. Like, I don't want to be here. I don't, 
I don't yep. want to whatever. But at the same time, I'm like, I don't shy away from the opportunity when it's like my friends or, um, you know, people around me that they're like, yo, like, how do you do it? Like, that's mm. usually the question that I get. Like, yo, Jess, how do you do it? Like, how do you stay this, that, and the third? Like, what's the secret? I'm like, yeah, God. And they're like, you know, like people tell me that, but like, how, how does it work for you? So I always that's feel good. like I have a, like a very strong uh, awareness and being able to kind of plant the seeds, not shy away from my relationship and what I believe, but at the same time, like planting a seed where someone becomes curious, that I'm able to point them to different resources so that they can meet God for themselves. Um, yeah. Whether it's my live prayers, whether it's a conversation that I have with someone or just randomly like just talking and be like, yo, like, you know, I read this and I was talking to myself and my coworkers are always telling me to like, yo, Jess, like whenever you speak, we just like to listen to you speak. And I'm like, why? They're like, because you be saying some real stuff. They're yeah. like, you know, I, I respect, you know, God, da, 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 but they're like, just the stuff you be talking about, it makes me wonder. And I'm like, well, I was like, hopefully if you're curious enough, I was like, there's a book there. Right. Um, if you need like somebody to pray for you, I was like, I got you. You got to tell me what it is. Um, but at the same time, like just being open and letting people know, like, I'm going to meet you where you at. Cause yeah. that's where Jesus does. He meets us where we're at. That's it. Um, but at the same time, like, you're not going to come talk to me crazy talking about some, you know, this is what it is you believe in is more right than what I believe in. Cause like I said, I've had an encounter with God. So no one can change my mind about that. Yeah. So my whole thing is just like, it's cool what you believe in, but I was like, I feel like once you have a real encounter with the Holy Spirit, that's when your mind, everything just shifts. Yep. But again, it's like, I can only pray and intercede that for somebody, yep. but it has to be a willingness from that other person to want that. Yes. Um, but the willingness also comes from ah, people feeling like they're going to be accepted because a lot of people don't realize that we're the first Bible that people will actually read. Right. Um, yep. A lot of people predicate how God is based off how we are, you know, how we love, how we talk, how we um, correct one another. Mm -hmm. um, so it's just like when you got people that don't really actively know how to do that correctly, or maybe they got certain areas that they need to work on, it can shy away people from actually wanting to get to know God because they look at you and like, yo, if that's what knowing God looks like, I don't want it. Right. Um, yeah. So it's kind of like a give or take where it's just like, yo, I'm not perfect. But at the same time, like God has done some things for me. And that's kind of just why I leave the, the gist of the conversation where I'm like, I'm not perfect. I'm working every day to be better. But at the same time, like I know God is real and he's rescued me from these places. Right. He's helping me now. Um, and I'm just trying to push myself to be better. And these are ways that I'm doing it. And if it piques their interest, then we jump into a different conversation. And if not, then... I firmly believe that it's a seed that's sown. And as long as it's sown, eventually the harvest will come if the person continues to seek water. Mm. So. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Right there. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The, the chat's been going off, by the way. Uh, I know I know. Uh, you may not be able to see the chat right now, but chat's been going <laughs> off. Uh, they've been a amen and you dropping the mic. Uh, you know, uh, she's uh, she's navigating depending on uh, per person with discernment. Uh, you know all, all that yeah they 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 with you and the thing is and and you use the word accepted and so only because that that can be kind of a a, a messy word depending on you know who who's thinking of it um what i was thinking while you were speaking about it was people want to to be heard right they want to yep. feel like they're actually being heard and and i think um the understanding that there's nuance in conversations and when i and and when I say nuance, it doesn't mean that you don't feel like there is a truth, um, but to understand that that truth has a spectrum, right? Like you got to understand that like um, though the comment or the thought is true, you don't, you may have not built enough history with that person to understand the weight that that comment that they said or that perception that they have. Mm -hmm. And so... That's why relationships are important. That's why you want to build relationships uh, when doing it. And, and yes, can God give you a word to say some to somebody right then and there? Yes. Um, do I believe that it's 
something where you start yelling at them, you know, and putting yeah. them down? No, nah, I don't think so. I, I feel like that actually kind of goes contrary to uh, just the way that Jesus uh, handled himself as well as uh, just kind of how Scripture uh, talks about, you know, to love one another, right, and to serve one another first and foremost. And so, uh, but that that's what, that's what I was thinking. Uh, I was thinking more so, yeah, a person is more willing to hear from you a Christian because, oh, thank you for this filter at uh, this time. Good job. Uh, go ahead, because somebody just tossed this on me. Go ahead. I'm literally thinking in my head as you were saying that. There's a verse that it says, quick to listen, slow to speak. Amen. In order for you guys to get to any type of common ground, both parties or all parties have to be willing to want to hear each other. And I think yep. that's that's the controversy that we have even outside of the church is like everybody wants to be right um everybody wants to be right everybody wants to be heard but nobody wants to listen yes so yes you feel me like there's a lot of things that we can avert from um if we were to go ahead and listen but everybody just wants to be very quick on speaking um so i'd say that to go with your point is everybody wants to be heard and it's the truth that that's that's a form of, of feeling accepted when you can feel heard or that whatever it is that you're saying matters to a certain extent. Um, you know, but granted, when people find themselves, if they find themselves in the club or, you know, different areas is because they feel something from that group or that substance or whatever it may be mm -hmm. that they don't get from outside. Um and the funny thing, too, is just like even with the substance and where they're at, God can meet them right there. It's just a form of calling out. Yeah. Yeah. No, absolutely. Yeah. And, uh, um, you know, uh, like Nisha said, uh, listen to hear, uh, not listen to respond. Uh, right. And then uh, Kat uh, put out James 119. Understand this, my dear brothers and sisters, you must all be quick to listen, slow to speak and slow to get angry. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, and and but oh my gosh, have we not, especially since 2020, seen the opposite, right? Fast to get angry, right? Uh, 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 and slow to listen, <laughs> you know, and fast to talk. And, and I mean, gosh, this is partly why um, I am never, ever on Twitter, not even one bit. And That's I, funny. <laughs> it's neither. something that. I was already disliking well before. And, and okay, it's more so because I got tired of seeing the no holds bars, um, thumb warriors for whatever cause where mm -hmm. you just pop off at the mouth. And it's just like, I guarantee you would not speak in such a manner if that person was face to face. And I'm not saying because, you know, they're going to chop you in your throat or whatever. It's just there, there's a certain decency that uh, a person will not have if they are uh, from a distance, right? If I don't, uh, if I am not from a particular area, I can have a thought about them all day long, right? Yep. But it's not until I meet somebody from that area that I realize, oh, they're, they're the exception. And if I'm really mature, I'll understand and go, oh, you know what? There might be more exceptions. Maybe what I know is a caricature than compared to everybody else. Because right now, the rest of the world looking at America through this caricature. Like, y'all yep. don't know what a woman is, but yet Mother's Day just happened, but, you know, and, and stores still selling Mother's Day stuff. You know what I mean? Like, they can look at us and be like, yo, y'all are a whole fool over here. But when somebody were to meet some of us individually, you'd go, oh, that's not everybody. Okay, yeah. I get it. So, I don't know. This fact, though. That's very big facts. And I think it's important because it's kind of like, um, it's kind of like stereotyping, but yep. by their characteristics, really. Mm -hmm. um, you know, where it's just like, you kind of just look and be like, oh, I already met one person that's like this and this, that, and the third. I always try to tend it and put it in my mind where, what if God thought about this? The same way I'm thinking about this person, what if God thought that about me? Like, <laughs> mind you, and not everybody's like that. It took me a very long time to get here. <laughs> yeah. Um, Sanctification, it, that's what that is. I, I, boy, I put it in my mind. I'm like, God, 
I was like, what if, what if you didn't have the patience with me that I have with this, this said person? Granted, I'm not saying to involve yourself in anything toxic or right, right. detrimental to yourself. Right. But at the same time, it's just like understanding, like, what if God was so quick to write us off the way that we're quick to write everybody else off? Yep. Um, you feel me? Or what if it was a fact of he didn't even send Jesus to die for us? Like, mm. that's kind of just what I put in my mind where I'm like, bro, I was like, my life could have been so different right now. Mm-hmm. Like, mm-hmm. in a in a very, like, different, different way. Because granted, it's like... um you're still going to go ahead and have your everyday life where it feels like you're in bondage. But in reality, it's like Jesus already set the price. He already paid the price. I'm sorry. Um, So it's like when we put ourselves in bondage, it's really us allowing for certain things to happen to keep us there because something's going on up here. Um, So literally, I just like, bro, then my life could be so different where I could be in actual physical shackles and, you know, fanning somebody or, you know, Stuff like that that happens like in different countries and things like that where there's dictators and stuff like that. So I'm just like, I put it in my head that way. I'm like, God, I was like, I just need to have more grace with myself and with people. But it's hard because some people are just very rude and not mature enough for certain things. So it's like that fire inside you just wants to tell them off. And then you're like, you know what? God help me because yeah. that happens to me at least once once a week i promise um no yeah, i feel that like, it's so like funny that you're even talking me. about that because uh i posted on my uh my ig earlier i was i was at chick-fil-a getting some editing done uh just chilling and, and I, I posted uh something along the lines of like do you don't you ever wish that your noise canceling uh headphones, headphones could cancel annoying because like there was just there was this one chick who was just extraordinarily loud for no reason uh and uh yeah it was it, it's just so funny that you're, you're saying that now now we we like you just said like some people are just a little bit harder to love right we are called yep. to love and to serve um i ain't gotta like you and i don't need to to hang out with you right i'm not i'm not the one who's gonna bring you to jesus i just gotta make sure i uh i am an ambassador for christ so i, yep. I want you uh, I want to represent him in such a way uh, that even in your annoyingness, um, instead of me going off on you, I'm going to show you how great his mercy is by keeping my mouth shut <laughs> and keeping it moving. And you don't even know the wrath that I saved you from. <laughs> it's the truth, though. And that's why it's so funny, because it's like it happens. And I think the more transparent people can become with like those are real feelings that you feel yeah. i feel like that's when a lot of more authenticity could come within the church and just within the space itself um because it's just like some some people tend to think oh well, i feel this way it's bad or if this is like it's a real human emotion you know but at the same time it's how you act do you how do you act when you feel these things or you think these yes. things um yes. So it doesn't make you evil for, you know, feeling a certain way. It's just really just how how you carry yourself when you're feeling that way. And it's a lot easier said than done because nine times out of ten, you know, you got some people they're like, yo, we act first, think later. You mm-hmm. feel me? But um, mm-hmm. then you got other people that's like, nah, I can't because in the long run, this could come back and, and do some more damage than what it really needed to do. Right. So it's really just all about having discernment. And I say that I've been very lucky to have people in my life to help me with that. Um, because at one point in time, I was very much immature mm. in, a, in a whole different level. Where it's like, I ain't have patience for nobody. And I feel like I'm a very patient person. So the fact that I don't have patience for nobody, I'm like, I was like, God, you got to do something. Because I work with people every day. I repeat myself every day. Like, yeah, you yeah. got you got to help me um, meet me where I'm at so that I can do what it is I got to do. Um, but at the same time, like just having grace for myself where if there are certain days where I don't necessarily do 100 percent, I'm like, God, OK, how can I improve myself moving forward through the rest of the week, through the rest of the day and not um, soak or kind of just stay on the, all the things I did uh, bad? 
Um, yeah. But I say that I'm getting better with that too. Cause that was like a thing for me where I was like, I look at everything I did bad and never give grace to myself for everything I did right. Mm. Um, so I think that's been very helpful and it's allowed me to help like with how I interact with people and having like patience and grace for other people. Cause I'm like, yo, Jessica, you you were you were at this place one time in your life as well. Like you was you was just here like two months ago or last week. Right. Shoot, twenty right. minutes ago. <laughs> we be forgetting. Um, yeah, we do. So I just try to put it in my mind, and then when I'm able to kind of just have a conversation with that person, and they're able to see like, dang, she actually was here, like where I was, and because that's a lot of ten people start acting out because they don't feel like no one can relate to them. They don't feel like anybody can meet them where they're at. Right. You know no sense greater than the other and i'm not gonna say that um whatever somebody's situation is you know people say oh like there's out there it's worse it's not to be dismissive of whatever their situation is um but to let them know that things could be worse but right now it's just like we're gonna work through whatever it is that you got going on um because it could be worse not to be dismissive of whatever's going on and i had to learn that because i get pissed off when people would say certain things i'm like yo why are you dismissing me for it mm. like my miami side would come out i'm like damn like <laughs> me <Mira> lo- <laughs> I mean, like come here let me, let me talk to you real quick but um i had to i had to learn that and understand that like not everybody's had the same encounterment with yeah. god everybody's right. encountering different things at different times of their life so just being able to be able to hear where that person is, where they're coming from, what they're dealing with, right. and ask how to pray for them. Um, and even sometimes when they don't say anything, like, yo, bro, I'm going to pray for you. And they're like, oh, thank you. Like, okay, bet. Um, but at the same time, I think that's just where it starts is asking yourself all these questions. Like, before you get mad with somebody else, it's just like, how upset were you with yourself when this happened? Um, and at the same time, it's just like, how did you feel when – you know, maybe people weren't as receptive to you or as open and Mm -hmm. wanting to let you be heard. Like, how did that make you feel? Um, That's kind of where I always try to put myself. How did it make me feel? Um, Did I have these type of resources? How can I be an assistance to that person? Because nine out of 10 is like, people need that. Even if you feel like they don't deserve it or not, people need it. Um, And I feel like that's not my call to be like, you know what, you don't deserve this from me. God did not like I didn't deserve for God to send his only son to die for me so it's like it. I'm not gonna sit here and be like yeah you don't deserve for me to listen to you but at the same time if I feel like emotionally I can't handle it because I don't have the capacity I will do the best that I can to point you into the direction of someone who can listen so that you can get it out yeah. um so I think that's important too. not not trying to play savior Cause that was also like a thing for me too, where I have such a big open heart wanting to listen to people. And it's a very dangerous place to be. Mm-hmm. Um, Cause at that point it's like, you're pouring yourself out and there's nothing being poured back into you. Yeah. Um, so yeah. just being mindful and like people can take advantage of that too. Um, so like I said, nothing entertaining, like something of toxicity where it's like, yo, if you realize you're having the same conversation every single time, you may have to seek outside counsel to help you with this and not take it on your own yeah. um, to correct that person. And it's like, if you don't believe me, Bible says it too. I can't tell you what scripture it is off the top of my head, but it does say that. It's just like when you're correcting your brother and your sister, um, you do it in love. And if they don't listen, then you go ahead and you grab somebody else to help you so you can do it in love. Right. But now does everybody like blasting people on like right there in the comment section. I'm like, whoa, okay. And I'm leaving. <laughs> yeah yep yeah no that's good that's good and uh and uh man i keep forgetting their actual name there's the screen name is de la bouche or something i can always say it's something but uh but but they got they brought up a good point and this is what i always say is uh that, you know uh it's easy it's easy to fall back to whatever we were before right um which is kind of what you're hitting on uh what i always tell everybody is uh dev okay thank you my bad um uh what i always say is um nothing really surprises me because we're all one choice away from and then fill in the blank right from Mm -hmm. being a murderer from being you know an addict from being 
you know, lazy from being whatever, right? Like we're, we're all literally one, one choice away. And the reason why I say one choice is because we know that by the time somebody um, comes out having some kind of issue or whatever, there's been so many little choices that has happened right prior to that. Uh, but it started with that one, right? And so uh, I think that understanding um, is kind of what you were touching on. It's just, it's just a healthy reminder uh, that first off, I, I am not going to withhold um, love for people and I'm not going to withhold being good to others um, just because yeah. you tried to wrong me, you know, or whatever the case may be. So, um, but you said a lot, you said a lot in that whole thing and, and I, we ain't got a whole lot of time left with you. And so I want to, I want to be mindful <laughs> on it, but, uh, but no, it's, it's all great conversation. Um, and, uh, and, I, and I know you can't see the chat right now, but it's, it's, it's going off. So, um, but okay, well, uh, I want to I want to get into the Oxen Brand Spotlight portion of the show, uh, where we get a chance to hear from the artist directly uh, as to their song. And so, Jekka, uh, you've got a song called "Paid in Full." So, could you kind of give us uh, some backstory as to uh, where your headspace was uh, in it for the song, and then also uh, just kind of your hopes uh, for others who are receiving that song? So Paid in Full, that song's gone through so many name changes from when we first made it. Um, but basically Paid in Full is just to highlight the fact of no longer living in this mindset that you've been defeated, wherever you find that self of, of feeling defeated. Um, because God has already sent his only son to pay the price for us to walk in, in freedom, for us to be able to walk in the calling that he's placed upon our life before we were even brought into this world um but it's easy to get caught up in you know whether it's your past mistakes whether it's a current mistake that you made um whether it's you not feeling like you're accepted or um find yourself to be like um in a place where you just feel like 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 this is where you need to be like you feel like an outcast it's just like understanding that God's already went ahead, sent his son, paid that price for you mm. to be able to walk in the purpose that he's called you in. But with everyday life and things that happen and culture and just things like that, it's so easy for us to put ourselves back into that place of feeling like we're still in bondage. Mm. And like I touched on earlier, where it's like we're already set free. Who the son set free, set free is indeed. Mm. However, in our mind, it's so important where it's like where we're renewing it by basically transforming the renewal of our mind every day by reading his word, being able to talk to him, things like that, and understanding that whose voice it is you're listening to when things are happening. Because like I said, granted, it's like feeling defeated is really just a state of mind yeah. um, because at the end of the day, it's just like no one's forcibly keeping you in the place that you're in but yourself. Um, and that's something that I have to learn and something I'm actually learning now. Um, and when I wrote it, I wasn't in that place, but now I'm in a place where I'm like, I have to move outside of my feelings. Like, I really feel like I'm in a place of God, not my will, but let your will be done. Mm -hmm. And it, I'm going to be very honest. It's not always a good feeling for me because I'm like, yeah. God, I don't. I don't want to do certain things. I don't understand why this is happening. I don't want to feel this way. But at the end of the day, I'm looking at it from the perspective of if this is what you want from me, then you got to walk me through this. You got to be with me. When I show up to places, it's like you got to show up and bring me with you. Um, yeah. Because it's, it's really just where I'm at. And I told myself this uh, maybe like a few weeks ago, I was having a conversation with myself and with God in a way where um, there was a Bible verse and it was in the book of Proverbs, I believe, where it said, um, a man's body can endure sickness, but a crushed spirit who can bear. Mm, right. So yes. it's like it hit me and I was just like, yo, like no one ever talks about how emotional pain literally will make you not want to do anything yeah <laughs> anything at all um you won't eat you won't you know do certain things you know people that go to the extreme they won't get out their bed take a shower things like that like it really can put a hold on you and um basically like i told myself i was like i feel like 
at this point in my life is like there's a lot of fans of Jesus. You know, there's a lot of um, fans out there that's just watching. It's like, yo, like I know God can do great things. Um, you know, I've he- I've heard about it. You know, I maybe I saw it this one time. But it's like, how many of you can actually believe because he's taking you through a season in your life where you're forced to become a believer? Yeah. Um, so I told myself, I was like, I feel like I'm in a place in my life where there are certain things inside of me that God no longer wants me to be a fan of, but he wants me to be a sold out believer of. Mm. And the only way to get me there is to have me where I'm at and push me through my, you know, out my feelings of what it is I may feel and yeah. really just depend on him to walk me through what he's got me doing, like different things is that in the third and just being able to consult with him, you know, before I do anything, even in the midst of doing it after I do it. And it's really helped me a lot where I find myself thinking differently, um, breaking down things differently that I've never thought of before. And I'm just like, God, this would have never happen if i wasn't here and granted i may not i may not still like it right here and the way i want to just skip this part but i was like i was like there's something that i'm supposed to really learn and it's going to help me to advance the other people that you got me going to then so be it and it sucks because it's like i think back to that little girl that would ask him god what about me what's my gift what am i here for and I'm like, be careful what you ask God for, because he might just give it to you in a way that you didn't think it was going to come. <laughs> right. And I'm just like, here I am. But at the same time, like I said, it's, you're going to be the only Bible that sometimes people read that first encounter of what God looks like. Right. And sometimes people don't want to hear what they hear in the church. They want to be able to hear an actual person where they have such a sold out faith in God, where it's like, yo. You don't even talk like a church person. I don't even know what that means. Right. But they're just like, yo, you don't even talk like a church person. Like, yeah, you know, but paid in full is basically just an encouragement to not stay stuck in where you may be feeling, whether, you know, it's your emotional, internal feelings in your mind, things like that. It's just understanding that if you're still here, you still have purpose and you got to keep pushing forward. Um but obviously, it's like it's going to take more than just you pushing forward. You got to ask God for his help. There's no yes. way you can do this without him. Yes. So uh, it was a, there's a verse. It's like, with me, uh, what is it? With me, you can do all things. Without me, you can do nothing. Apart from me, you can do nothing. Yep. And that's kind of just the, the way that I'm thinking in my mind now in my life. Where I'm like, God, if you're not a part of it, I don't want it. Like, if you're not a part Amen. of this, I don't want it. Amen. Like, that's just that's where I'm at. So yeah. paid in full is literally my life right now. <laughs> um of just where God has me and literally just walking in outside of my feelings. Cause there's a lot of things that I'm literally pushing obedience and submitting myself to what I'm being called, what I feel I'm being called to do, mm-hmm. as opposed to God, I don't feel like doing this. Cause the bigger picture is not me. It's the people that he wants to get this out to. And I can just only pray that I could be that seed. I'm not trying to be no one's savior. I'm not trying to be, I want to be just like Jekka. Like, no, hell no, don't do that. Don't be like me. <laughs> be like Jesus. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> I was like, I'm going to disappoint you very much, you know, so because I'm a human. But it's look to God and I hope that I can be that where it's like, yo, I'm not perfect. I'm struggling with different things. But this is where I'm getting my strength from. And it's funny because I literally wrote a song last Friday. And that's a line that it says, you don't know the journey that I'm on. I'm here because of the strength that I live off of. Mm. Like, like I'm here because of him. Like, if it was up to me, you're not going to see me. You're not going to hear from me. Yeah. But because I'm not in that mindset or I've been able to kind of be pushed out of that mindset. Allowing myself is the best way to put it. Cause God's a gentleman. He's not going to force you to do something you don't want to do, Facts. but giving myself that opportunity of God, like if we're going to do this, like you got to be here for me. So that's, that's where we are. Yeah. Like, I know that was a lot, but no, that's yeah. all right. At this point, I just kind of realized I probably could have just went ahead and started the stream. And then I could have just got off camera and just let you hold it down girl. Cause you've been holding it down. Throwing out some 
throwing out some good stuff. I'm telling you, listen, like if you didn't live the East Coast and this wasn't a late show, we'd be we'd be chopping up for a whole lot longer. Cause I I love the conversation where you're going. Uh, it's definitely a topics topics of which uh, that I love to get into different uh, nuances and and uh, you know just going back and forth or whatever. So there's so 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 much good stuff. Uh, but uh, we're gonna get into some more good stuff and we're gonna actually listen to the track "Paid in Full" by Jekka Soul. Y'all know what it is. Let her know in the chat what you guys feel about this song. Let's check it out. Let's go. Hey, that was it. That was it right there. Man, okay. Uh, man, that's such a good song. Man, like you were, just the way that you were just bouncing in that groove, like like it's, ah, uh, some people just try to do it. You just do it naturally. And, you know, anybody who knows me, I'm a natural born hater with love and grace. I ain't trying to win nobody's <laughs> love or approval, okay? So this is genuine, like, just listen to the song. Like, it's, it's definitely going with our smooth vibes uh, 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 Spotify playlist because like it, it is it is a track that is repeatable for sure. Not just because of the length, although I do wish the song was a little longer. But not just because of the length, um, but uh, just everything that you're saying in there and uh, the fact that like I would have to listen back and go. I feel like I feel like that's a song that if I keep listening back to it, I'm gonna keep getting something from it. Right. And I think yeah. that's what's really, really important as far as artists are concerned, because, you know, you're putting out music all the time and um, and you're almost doing it so fast that people forget, you know, your other music. And so I feel like this song is is not really a forgettable song, uh, not just sonically, but even just the fact that I mean, just the validation part that you were talking in there right towards the end as well. And uh, there's just yeah, there's just so much to it. So that was that's a dope track. Thank you so much for uh, being obedient to the Lord. Uh, for it and uh, who who produced that track by the way so my boy uh his name is made um but yeah man he's he went ahead and produced that funny enough is um when we met each other he basically kind of just started out as my videographer um mm. and stuff like that but he's like he's been doing sound engineering for over 10 plus years he actually mixed mastered everything like that's my dog but either way, he went ahead and produced that record for us. And um, he actually basically started producing again specifically because he was like, yo, I feel like, you know, the Lord is calling me. And it's something that I've been praying about, too. Because as an artist, like I mentioned earlier, beats are not free. They don't just pop up. You feel me? Right. Um, but just being able to have, like, the relationship that we've been able to build. Yeah. Like he's basically uh, just become one of my main producers now. Um, so like he went ahead, produced that record. That's actually like our first track together mm -hmm. outside of him, like recording videos and stuff mm -hmm. um, for like him putting it together. And when I brought him the record, cause it was originally on um, another beat mm -hmm. that I had, but ah, I, it was a bunch of complications with it. So I was yeah. like, yo, I was like, if I can't do nothing with, with the beat, I was like, I may have to scrap the song. And um, wow. he prayed about it and he came back and he was like, yo, Jekka, like, I know this is not normally what I do, but he's like, I gave it a try. If you don't like it, then, you know, we can go. And I was like, nah, bro, I was like, this is it. Yeah. So, yeah, no, and it just feels good. Like, it just feels, I don't know. I like making records that feel good for sure. Yep. So yep. I like it where you can drive in a car. It just feels real smooth. Um, but nah, my boy um, made his name. His real name is Aaron. He went ahead and produced that. And a lot of the other records that we got coming out, he's producing that as well. So I'm excited, man. Like, that was our first record. He considers it his baby, too, when we yeah. went ahead and we put it out. Um, he was actually the person that was behind the creative directing for the cover art and everything, too. Oh, that's um, yeah, man, I was like, I just thank God because, like I said, if it was up to me, I'd be like, yo, I don't feel like doing this. And if he's ever with me one day, he'll tell you, he'll be like, man, I had to really intercede for Jekka because <laughs> he was like, man, but we're here. And um, yeah, man, he did his thing. And I always tell him, like, I'm super proud of him because I know it's not really his thing anymore. Yeah. But the fact that, like, he's done it, 
and he wants to continue to do it, I don't ask him to do it. I'm just like, God, thank you, because you know how picky I am. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And that's, I mean, that's such a blessing to be able to actually work uh, with somebody, um, you know, locally too. Uh, where you can bounce off ideas and stuff like that and, and, and work through some things uh, as well. So that's, that's dope. That's dope. Well, uh, Jack, it's, uh, again, it's been, it's been an amazing time to have you on the show. Uh, I know the time's flown by. We've already been uh, a little over an hour. But, um, man, just, uh, again, thank you for just your, um, uh, your ministerial heart. Uh, uh, you you know you you minister on your IG lives. Uh, obviously, you guys have seen the links in the mm -hmm. chat. Make sure you guys uh, are following her um, on her socials. Every Monday night, uh, she goes on and does prayer requests live and prays uh, for everybody. And uh, just uh, you know, you you you're just really encouraging. You, you know, you're really encouraging. Um, and uh, you got, you got some people wanting to move to Florida. Uh, but seriously, I think it's uh, I think it's dope. Uh, I've seen a couple, we got a couple artists in the chat uh, who talked about potentially, you know, wanting a feature and all that. How can somebody, what what, what do they got to do? What do they got to do to get a feature with you? What's the process like? So basically the easiest process, I'm going to be very Drop 5K. That's the easiest process. Okay. You drop five and they got you. Okay. Go ahead. Sorry. <laughs> the easiest process is there's um my management email is in my um bio mm -hmm. on my social medias. So basically, in the event, if you're interested in like doing a record, it's pretty much the record that you have in mind. Send it over so that we can actually go ahead and listen to it. And then on top of that, um, you know, just obviously just being able to have some sort of budget to work with. Um, granted, just for the simple fact that as an independent artist, like I said, it's like I still got to pay for things, um, equipment, things of that matter, um, subscriptions. It's just a lot. I kind of got mad with Pro Tools charging me the other day, but it's whatever. Um, either way, I basically go ahead and have certain things that I still got to, you know, get paid for and stuff like that. Um, but either way, it's like being able to send the record over, letting us know what your vision is, um, and then listening to it. And then we let you know if it's something that we feel is a perfect fit. A big thing for me is I never try to force anything. So if yeah. I feel like this is yeah. not it, then it's just like, don't, take it personal um really it's just like just understand like if it's meant to be the right one will come along i got friends that if they're ever on the show they'll tell you like man they had to wait a minute because i'm like yo i don't want to just force a record like right. i wanted to be able to go to somebody and be able to minister granted um i also want to be able to like the song so it's like if I if I do something, I want to make sure I like it. Yeah. If absolutely. I don't like it, then I'm like, okay, it's like I, I don't want to just do it just because you're paying me to do it. I don't work that way. Right, right. Like I right. don't. I don't care how much money you offer me. Like, yo, Jack, I really want you on a song. Like, if I don't like it, I'm not gonna do it. Yeah. So yep. that's that's a full disclosure, just throwing that out there. But the management email, um, you guys can find it. It's on my bio and my Instagram, it's on my Twitter. I don't really go on Twitter, but it's there too. Um, but outside of that, that's the easiest way. Um, we usually get back pretty quickly. Um, I do have a lot of like tour stops that I'm going to be doing. Um, so I'm, I'm going to be gone a lot, um, coming up this next few weeks. So that's in the up. event, if you're trying to work, it's, you know, just being patient with me and my schedule too. <laughs> Absolutely. And, and let me say this right now, specifically, specifically for any fellas out there. Okay, you l l hear, hear me, hear me real, real close. In fact, come, 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 come here, come here. Don't be wilding out in them DMs. Don't Facts. be wilding out in the DM and said integrity sent you because I did not do that. Okay, I'm just, I'm just trying to, just trying to say, you know, don't be stupid. Now, if you guys don't know anything about that, go ahead and uh, check out our YouTube because uh, I specifically dropped the video when she talked about uh, some good ways to go through this process. So. Uh, mm -hmm. just saying just 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 in case because i'm for sure gonna clip this okay i'm for sure gonna clip this uh so that people know uh that it was not me that sent you okay because uh i will say this jack soul knows me uh, at least enough now to go nah he he ain't nah nah <laughs> he nah, didn't put his I, I, bro i i listen i'm at a point now where i'm i only go on social media to do my live prayers and then i schedule the content and leave that's bounce. just been the most that's, that's that's been the healthiest way for me in recent time um 
So keep in mind, it was like nine six out of ten. If y'all wilding out in the DMs, you, you're probably gonna get blocked. Like just full disclosure, we don't got time for that over here. <laughs> <laughs> like I'm all I'm all for it. I love you know God's people, but it's just like it's a certain reverence that you want to have for each other as human beings. Um, yeah. so that's just how I look at it. You don't come with no no funny stuff. It's cool, you know. I'm a cool person, but it's like I don't know, fam. Just <laughs> You That's know. it right there. I'll just leave right there. Just, I don't know. I, just, I, don't, I don't know. know if it, um, <laughs> block. I said block. Right there. Block. <laughs> so. Oh, man. Well, hey, Jekka, uh, again, I don't want to hold you any longer. Thank you so much again for being on the show. I'm sure we'll run run it back another time, of course. And, uh, you know, the, the hope is that eventually either there's, there's been a couple times that there's been some people who have uh, been wanting to get me back out in Florida uh, so hopefully run into you, you know, there, if not sometime, I'm sure it'd be really dope, uh, to, uh, to, to get together and all that. But, um, is there, uh, any, uh, any final words that you got for our audience before you bounce? Uh, for the most part, I would say that if you haven't go ahead and listen to paid in full, it's on all streaming platforms, share it with your friend. I hope that it encourages you. We got a lot more records coming out. Um, and I'm just very excited. It's a it's a very different sounds that I'm gonna be giving y'all. Still vibes, and that's something that I'm, I'm gonna be honest. I've noticed about myself. It's like I'm always gonna bring the vibe. Yeah. That's just that's just me. But for the most part, a lot of different sounds. Um, where you probably may or may not be like, oh my god, this is Jekka. But just to continue to like uh, keep me in prayer as far as like on my journey, because like I mentioned earlier, it's like it does take a lot. Um, not only as a creator, but just as a human being, you know, regular responsibilities and then yeah. being able to pour into others and have, you know, pour back into myself, have God pour back into me. Um, so if anything, it's just keeping me in prayer for my well-being because um, it's easy to burn yourself out when you're, uh, you know, trying to do everything. So yeah. for the most part, I'm still an independent artist. So there's a lot of things I still got to do on my own marketing wise you know this that and the third it's a lot of things that i gotta do on my own that i gotta pay for so i gotta work but um outside of that just keeping me in prayer um and just stay in tune stay tapped in if you guys want to have a prayer request every monday at nine eastern time is where i try to keep it at um you guys can go ahead pop in um or send in the dm like your actual prayer request um, what I like to do is I always try to keep it like a big family thing where I always ask people how their day was, how their week's been. Um, cause I feel like at the end of the day, you kind of need that space. Yep. It's always love. It's always vibes. Granted, you got people that's never met each other before, but there's never no disrespect in there. So I think it's pretty dope. Um, but yeah, outside of that, stay encouraged, whatever season it is that you're in, um, just understand that better is coming and, um, mm-hmm. That's kind of just where I'm at now. Like I told y'all earlier, it's a lot that's going on in just different parts of life for me. And I'm just like, God, I was like, whatever's coming forward, I want to miss what you're doing right now. But at the same time, like get excitement for what's also coming in the future. Because, you know, sometimes it don't always feel good to be where you're at right now. So it's kind of hard to be excited. So you got to have something to be excited for. Um, So... But outside of that, I love y'all. Um, thank you again for having me back on the show. Always a pleasure. Um, outside of that, like I said, you got more tunes that's coming out. Um, and hopefully next year, what I'm praying for is to be able to go on tour myself, like having my own tour. But, hey, you know, we keep that in prayer. Um, absolutely. Yeah, it's a lot. I, I got friends that put that together, and it, it's a lot of work. Yep. So. But at the same time, it's just like, I know God can do anything. So whatever he wants, even if it's a small one, but yep. just keep that in prayer for me. From Absolutely. Absolutely. We definitely going to keep you up in prayer for sure. So thank you again, sis. And uh, yeah, till next time. All right, y'all. Peace. Hey, if you liked any of this content and you found some value in it, make sure that you like, subscribe, and of course, share it. Also, if you're interested in some more, go ahead and check out these videos. Till next time, grace and peace. Adios.